welcome back to the blush studio my name is Katrina Crouch I am a fine artist and illustrator and stationer uh, my primary focus is in the wedding industry but thankfully I am able to experiment with a lot of different medias and a lot of different subjects um, so today in this video I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the benefits of masking fluid and a little trick that I found to kind of make the process of using it a lot easier at least for me um, so when I heard about this trick, I knew I had to give it a shot. So that's what we're going to do in this video today. I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you my real first-hand experience with using this um, technique and just kind of some things that I tested out. These are not like beautiful final pieces, but it's just I want to try it out in a couple different ways to see how it would work on two different types of brushes and with something that's a little bolder and something that is a little more um, detail oriented. I did, ha you know, I'm going to show you some of the mistakes that I made along the way and kind of talk you through that. I have heard about these silicone um, brushes that you can that are designed to work with masking fluid that you can purchase. So I'll have some of those linked down below. Okay, well, all you'll need today is your uh, masking fluid. So I'm using the Winsor Newton masking fluid specifically for watercolor and some dish soap. Again, I have Dawn here. I don't think that it matters, but um, the tutorial that I read said to use Dawn. So that's what we're going to use today. And then you'll need a paintbrush. Now, if you've been around here for a while, you know that I am a round brush user. But because I am worried about this tutorial, I'm going to start with one of my flat brushes because it's really not as important to me. So let's move the painting out of the way and I'm going to pour some of this into one of my mixing bowls. Now I haven't used this bottle for a while so you can see that some of it has caked up at the top and that actually does cause some problems later. So if you have some of that, I recommend that you kind of get it out of your collection. Um, we'll move more into that a little bit later, but I wish I had thought to remove that beforehand. So what I did was I dipped some of, I dipped my brush in the dish soap and I wasn't sure how much you needed. And so really I started off with way too much, which made my brush really wide and caused some problems with the actual application itself. But I thought that this would be ideal, using the masking fluid would be ideal for creating the window panes in this painting. So this is the Swan House in Atlanta, Georgia, and I wanted to just kind of test it out and see how it would work. So I ended up using um, the tip of this brush. Um, again, I'm a round brush user, and so I used it kind of like a round brush, but just trying to different things out. Um, I wasn't sure how this was going to go, and so I was just experimenting to start. Let's speed this up a little bit. Um, so I ended up doing, I think, all of the windows. I can't remember now offhand. It's been a couple of weeks since I filmed this. And just kind of testing things out to see, you know, how thick I would need to make the lines. I ended up going back in eventually and making everything a lot thicker. And um, I wish I hadn't done that because that ended up kind of messing some things up. Um, but I wasn't sure. I was a little worried about how much of the fluid was getting down and how much of the soap was getting down. And really I found that I didn't need to worry about that. Really none of the soap that I noticed transferred onto my painting at all. And it certainly didn't cause any problems with um, painting the actual windows or transferring any of that pigment. Um, so that is one thing. If you are using this, don't worry about it. It seemed to work really well, at least um, for this detailed section. But while that was drying, I also wanted to test out um, using a thicker brush. I did end up using my round brush, so there you can see it is without any of the soap on it. And now with some soap on it, I again tapped off some of that excess and went in. Now the big problem that I ran into here is that I actually picked up some of the more dried masking fluid. kind of just was chunky on my brush and it ended up causing some major problems. So here you'll see that I kind of removed some more of the excess soap on there because initially I thought that that was causing the problem, um, but it ended up being just the dried, more chunky sections of the masking fluid itself. So it does cause some problems later down the road, more so with this piece that's a little bit thicker than with the piece that I just showed you a moment ago. One thing that I did find super irritating was how often I had to go back for more pigment. Um, you, if you've worked with watercolor before you know that the brush usually holds a lot of pigment so you don't have to go back constantly like I just felt like I was doing here. I ended up going back so often that I ended up mixing some of the dried paint that I didn't realize was left at the bottom of the bowl into the masking fluid itself. But as you'll see in a minute um, that actually didn't show up on the final piece which was super exciting um, that the masking fluid was able to protect it so much. 
So again, I'm just testing things out. So I did kind of a quick watercolor, really just to clean off my palette and just to see kind of what would happen. So I layered it up a little bit to see how thick this um, masking tape or masking fluid, not masking tape, my goodness, masking fluid would work um, and how it would resist. And I'm um, just to see if like the soap would kind of interfere with the credibility. So then for the most satisfying part, peeling everything off. So again, that black pigment that was stuck in the masking fluid didn't actually stay. So you can't see it on the L at all. And it came up really easily. So it didn't look like compromised the integrity of the masking fluid. It still worked really well. I'm about how I would expect it to. I did find on this J section that it was thinner so that somehow the blue paint got through that one and not through the rest of it, which I thought was really odd. While I don't know for sure what happened, I suspect with this section on the J and then right here what I'm tearing up on the Y, um, there's a little bit of bleeding there as well. I think that was just the dried chunky section and so it didn't have as good of a hold. Um, but everything else in general looks pretty good. Um, other than those two sections, I didn't really have any problem. So definitely make sure if you're using masking fluid that you remove all of the chunks. Um, just It just doesn't work as well. So going back to my our more detail-oriented piece, I am now painting over the windows in the deep blue color that I'm using to portray kind of the interior um, and the glass. So I'm putting really thick layers on here. One thing that I really like that the masking fluid allows me to do is to show kind of a more traditional watercolor effect where you know one section of the window might be lighter and then it fades slowly into a darker section. So once the paint itself dried, I decided to start pulling it off. Now because I put it on so thickly, I felt like um, it was transferring onto my hands a little bit, so I decided just to be sure I would remove it with a paper towel or in this case toilet paper. And um, that worked really well and I didn't have any pigment transfer onto my painting itself. So speeding things up a little bit, I just went through with that paper towel and just kind of picked a different section while I was rolling it off. Um, again, I didn't find any transfer when I did this method, um, but I was really worried about it. So um, that's why I ended up using paper towel rather than just my fingers. I find that the oils of the fingers um, really encourage everything to kind of transfer. And um, this way I was able to avoid that. So as you can see, um, the two upper windows in the center, those are ones I did by hand. And really I found that this was a better alternative for this piece. So I ended up having to go back in and fixing all of these sections that I had done with the masking fluid. And I think that that was mostly because of the fact that I went so thick with the soap itself, which made all of the sections for the masking fluid much thicker. Um, so in hindsight, I wish I hadn't done quite so much because it ended up making the extra step really not helpful because I had to go back through and edit each window. Okay, now for the true test. So I just have a paper towel. I've wiped off some of the soap and you can see that the brush is just as fluid as ever. And in fact, after some conditioning, it's even a little bit more so. Same thing with this brush. So I wiped off some of the masking fluid and the bubbles. You can see there's some bubbles there from the soap. All right, so as you can see, I didn't really find this dish soap method to be super helpful with the details. And the bigger section, I was really more of a user error thing. I've since tried it out again and found that if I'm staying out of kind of the chunky, dried nastiness, I don't have quite the same amount of uh, trouble that I had with this one. But as you can see, it did work. My brushes are safe and I'm super excited that now I'll be able to use this tool in my artwork that really I've been working without um, for the past couple of years. So really excited to see where that goes. Hopefully you'll see it in a couple more tutorials coming up here shortly. And until then, happy painting.